Howdy fellow YouTubers, Zippo again. This is part two of putting uh, needle bearings in your front axle on your vintage Simplicity House Chalmers tractor. Um, this is take number five. I keep getting interrupted. Either my phone's going off or neighbors are knocking on my barn door. Um, let's hope we can get through it this time. I've got my axle sitting here. I've degreased it, gotten it all cleaned up, got everything that is associated with it cleaned up. I was fortunate, uh, I knew that this axle would be the best one for me to show. As you can see, these are the original thrust washers that come with the axle, <clears throat> and they're in very good shape, and I had no wear on my kingpins or on my axle sleeves. So this is a good example, but it may be a little more difficult for you if yours has a, a substantial amount of wear. What you have to do, even I did this, even though it wasn't necessary, but I did it just to make sure. You want to block the bottom sides of your kingpin tubes to make sure that they are completely flat, so that when your axles in place or your spindles in place, your washer is going to sit right where it needs to sit and sit flush. If not, it's going to put undue stress by canting the needle bearings and putting undue stress on one on one side and uh, no load on the other side. So you got to be careful about that. So you clean this surface, make sure that this surface is good and level, file it down, any burrs get rid of. Then on your kingpin, your spindle, same thing. Uh, you're starting off with a small washer, small thrust washer, and you're going to a big thrust washer. So the area that this big thrust washer has to lay down on, you need to make sure that that area is nice and flat and flush also. So I had to do a little bit of grinding to get a weld down so that my thrust washer would sit correctly uh, at the base. And it's just as important as this being flat. You need to make sure that that's good and, good and, uh, good and flat. And the stack up is as follows. 60 thousandths thrust washer. Needle bearing. Thrust washer with the reliefs that I described how to do uh, in the first video. Flip your axle right side up. Put your axle in. Last washer on top. Now if your thrust washers that were on there are in good shape and you want to use them, go right ahead. Put one back on there. Mine are in good shape. I may go ahead and do that. That will save me the expense of going out and replacing uh, at least two of the 60,000 thrust washers that I'm using here. I'm going to repeat the stack up again for you. Your, or 30 thousandths washer. You got 30 or 60 thousandths needle bearing, 30 thousandths. Thick washer, needle bearings, thin washer. Put it together, another thin washer. Put your key in. Bolt everything together and you're ready to go. Lather, rinse, repeat with the other side. Now a couple of the finer points. When you get this off, you want to clean this surface before you try to pull the axle out. If you don't, or before you try to pull the spindle out. If you don't, you're going to score your bronze bushing. You score your bronze bushing, it's going to fail sooner. So make sure, once you get your key out, that you deburr anywhere along here. Just You can use a file or you can use a piece of emery paper. Use whatever you've got available to clean that surface before you pull that out. Otherwise you're going to damage those bushings. And when you're taking your wheel off, where your set collar leaves a dent in your axle, you are going to have raised material. Again, either file it or sand it before pulling the wheel off. You're not going to do as much damage to the, the steel bearings as you would these bushings, but it just makes it a lot easier if that's good and clean. I usually just touch it up with the file right after I take the collar off. Now something else. On a badly worn axle, this area right here is going to get worn down. I've seen them where they are worn halfway down. This one's in real good shape for a 45 year old tractor. I was actually amazed when I got it off how little wear there was. Because I've got just a little wear, I'm not real concerned about filling that back in. I've seen some people fill it back in with that molding putty 
I've seen people fill it back in with welds and then grind it flush, put it back in, have good use out of it for another 40 years. Well, you know what I mean. In 40 years, they might have to take it off and do the same thing. Um, with this not being too bad, all I did was just broke the edges. I'm going to reassemble it like it is, but one thing that I am going to do, and that you can do, is go out and find you a piece of angle iron. You get that piece of angle iron, you drill your holes where your holes need to be, and then weld a bung on it. This gives me three quarters of an inch where I can let that pivot point ride and that's going to take a lot longer to wear out three quarters of an inch of that pin than it is to waller out the three sixteenths or quarter inch of uh, angle iron. When you've got this assembled and you just do preventative maintenance, greasing your king pins and whatnot, oil in your pivot point here, it's a good idea to take the load off of your axle by jacking your axle up, letting the axle tip forward. That'll take the pressure off here. Load it up with some real thick, heavy, sticky bearing grease. And do that often, and that'll help keep the wear to a minimum. Uh, there was one thing that I forgot to cover, and I'll cover it here real quick. When you've gotten this ground down, if you're not lucky enough to still have your thrust washer in place when you get this apart, you may have a divot here where this is worn down. If you have that problem, you're going to have to fill that space in before you put your washer over top of it. Otherwise, it's going to cause a center load problem in the middle and the insides of your needle bearings, the innermost part of your needle bearings are going to be taking uh, less of the load and the outsides will fail. So you got to make sure that's full. Get that cleaned up with a file. If there's a recessed area, you can use JB Weld, you can use any, any form of uh, mixing epoxy putty that's going to sit down in there. After it hardens, you level it out with a file or you can level it out uh, with a grinder if you're good enough with a small hand die grinder. But that's one thing that you need to watch for you need to make sure that that's in good shape. And in your bushings that, uh, that your spindle turns on, you'll need to inspect your axles, or your spindles rather, and make sure that you don't have any excessive wear on your spindles. If you do, like I said before, they're only four bucks a piece to replace those bushings. It's a worthwhile investment to uh, prolong the life of your tractor. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. My next tutorial is going to be on uh, removing and installing points on these Briggs and Str older Briggs and Stratton engines. I've had a few requests for them, so you can look for that in the coming days. Thanks, guys. See ya.